Hey guys, remember that wild autumn cardigan that I was knitting a couple of months ago? It was the beautiful collar work project. Um, let me tell you what I've done to it. <laughs> Hey there, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia, and this is Taking Back Friday. This is a space where we come every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting and spinning and weaving and dyeing, talking specifically about how important it is to make time to make things. Now, this location is my attic. If this is the first time that you are joining us, welcome. This is the space where we used to film all of the vlogs, all of the videos came out of this attic here. Um, it's quite messy right now, but it is what it is. Um, and we're back here filming today because it's a long weekend. <laughs> now, I want to share with you the knitting project that I've been working on for some months. And a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video called No Mojo, No Knitting Mojo. And it was because just don't feel like knitting right now. And there's a lot of reasons why I don't feel like knitting right now. But one of the reasons is because I kind of got stuck. I got stuck on something to do with this sweater. So I'm going to show you real quick, but <laughs> You can kind of see over there, that's the new serger that I bought sort of recently, sort of. So that's the serger that I bought last summer. And basically what I had thought was I was doing my make nine for the year. I had planned on doing a couple of sewing projects in the year. And I really planned on, you know, making some garments out of the hand woven cloth that I'd made, making some skirts, making some tops, all of these kinds of things. They were all in my brain. And so I got, um, this serger to go with it. And so uh, the serger basically cuts off excess fabric and finishes the edge of your fabric at the same time. And so you can use a serger to sew pieces together, to sew two flat pieces together to make your garments. So very often, you know, all of the tops and the t-shirts and everything that you're wearing is basically surged together. It's surged, finished, sewn, everything all at the same time, edges cut off, all of that kind of stuff. So I got this wonderful machine. It's fantastic. It works great. Now, <sighs> I'm so afraid to even talk to you about it. It's so bad. So, you know, when you look at any sort of a sweater that you've bought in a store, a commercial made sweater, um, your sweater is not hand sewn together. The ones that you buy at the store, they are knitted pieces of fabric that have come off of a big giant machine and then they've been cut and sewn together. They've been cut and surged together. So, you know, I have been happily going through um, all of my weaving samples and basically surging all of my weaving samples. So all of my samples have these nice little finished edges. There's no unraveling weft yarn off of these off of these weaving samples. It's great. So I'll show you the sweater so far. I finished the front and I finished the back. So you can kind of see I finished the front of the sweater, I finished the back of the sweater. I blocked the whole thing out so that it's nice and flat. And then I seamed it together up at the top using um, a mattress stitch. So it's nice and seamed together. Maybe you can kind of see it nice and seamed together. So it's nice and even, perfect, all of this kind of stuff. But look at all this stuff that's happening on the side here. Look at all this stuff that's happening here. So this is all just, you know, from changing colors, switching colors. I have all these ends out here. And so what happened was, <laughs> I guess there was one day where I was feeling a little bit um, frustrated, a little bit impatient, a little bit like annoyed with all of these strands hanging out and everything. And so it just fleeting thought went through my mind. I will run it through the serger. And so I did. Because, you know, I thought, Commercial garments are surged together. Commercial garments are pieces of knitted fabric that have been surged together, so why not? And all I wanted to do was basically finish the edges. So what I did was basically take the edges of my cloth. You can kind of see it. Take the edges of my cloth and basically run it through the serger so that I could chop off all of those excess ends that were hanging out the side. I thought this was a good idea. It's a terrible idea. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. These kinds of 
things happen to me when I get impatient with my fiber arts, when I get impatient with seeing results, when I get impatient with messiness and things hanging off and all this kind of stuff. And so I recognize this fault in myself that I often do the shortcut or I try to do the shortcut and the shortcut always causes me more problems than I think it will. This happened to me um, a few years ago where I basically tried to create a warp, tried to create a beautiful gradient warp for a, uh, I don't know, like I was going to make a, not a baby wrap, but like just a giant piece of cloth that was gradient and it was pretty. And so I held together all of these ends and made this warp and it's a shortcut. Rather than winding one thread at a time, I wound like 10 threads at the same time, holding them all together. Generally, it can be done without issue, but the way that I did it caused many snarls, many tangles. And, um, it was like August. It was hot. It, there's no air conditioning in the attic. So I was like hot and sweaty and it was probably like close to midnight and I was tired and I was trying to get this warp on the loom and it just wasn't working. And, um, because I had tried to do this shortcut, the shortcut actually screwed me up. And then because of my own frustration and my own impatience, I just cut the whole thing off of the loom and I just had this pile of wasted yarn on the floor. I took a photo of it so that I could always remember how bad it is for me to not be patient with the process when sometimes things are really just frustrating and annoying and challenging and I just cut it off the loom when maybe I could have just gone to sleep, had some rest, come back the next day and kind of like deciphered the whole warp and finally got it up on the loom. Yeah, that was a really bad situation. And so I kind of feel like this is approximating that same sort of thing where I was just frustrated with seeing all of these ends hanging out. And so I thought, what better way of getting rid of all of these things and finishing the edge than to just chop them all off with a serger? So I'll tell you why I think that this is actually a really bad idea. So very often when you're working with color work, we'll talk a lot about how it's important to use a yarn that will kind of almost felt together a little bit. It blooms, it blossoms, and it kind of meshes into it, itself. So like different colors will kind of merge together and they form a bit of a, like a solid fabric uh, that is uh, something that you could actually cut into. Like, so if you are working with a Shetland wool for color work and you knit a jumper and you cut up the middle to do a steak, that kind of thing is possible because of that, the characteristics of that wool. That wool being not super wash means that the fabric itself, the wool itself, those fibers entangle with each other and they become permanently stuck together, kind of like Velcro. Superwash has no such tendency. And so if I cut into my superwash project, it will unravel. It will just all come apart. And so the edges of these, uh, these, uh, so the edge of this cloth here, I have finished with this sewn edge and you can see that it, the, the margin is so, so small. Basically where it finishes the edge of the cloth, it also is cutting off those yarns where those yarns should probably be woven in, those ends should probably be woven in so that you have a little bit of room for the yarn to like move around a little bit. In this case, because I've cut them off, there's no room for that yarn to move. Those ends are just there. And so if the ends work themselves out of my um, surged edge, then it might start to unravel a bit. So I have basically ruined the stability <laughs> of my edges, of my selvages of my cloth by cutting off the ends. It was just, just such a terrible idea. So in any case, what I did was after having made this mistake and realized that, you know, this was a terrible idea, I went back over and I just used a running stitch and I just stitched down again, kind of very finely. I stitched down all the way around the edges of my cloth just to make sure that I could stabilize it just a little bit more. So hopefully all, all the stuff wouldn't unravel. So, I mean, this is not going to be the end of the sweater. This is not the end of the sweater. This is not it's not going to be like, oh, I'm not going to finish it. It's going to be whatever. It's just going to be really ugly on the inside. It's going to be really ugly. So 
So as you can see, the sweater is coming along. And um, as I talked about before, because I'm holding two strands of the Tough Love sock held double to do this color work, the fabric itself is a little bit um, on the heavier side. It's a little bit more stiff. It's a little bit more dense. And so I found that when I used the exact instructions to knit the sleeves, that the sleeves were a little bit too small for the armhole that I have created. I mean, I feel like I'm knitting to gauge, but you know, you know. <laughs> and so what I did was I actually knit half of the sleeve. I knit all the way down and to about the elbow of one sleeve. And then when I finally tried it on, I decided that the sleeve was too tight for my arm and also for the armhole. I needed it to have more space. I needed to give it more ease, more room. So I ripped out the entire sleeve and started again and just added more stitches. I picked up more stitches along the top of the sleeve cap. And so you can kind of see how the sleeve cap is being worked. I picked up all the way around the sleeve and then I'm doing short rows. So I'm knitting back and forth across the top and each time picking up one more stitch down, down, down the circle. So each time I started up here and knitting back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and picking up one stitch along each side until this is basically forming the cap of the sleeve. And so when I get down to about here, then um, I'll have this this opening right here at the bottom of the sleeve. And then I'll just continue to keep knitting in that tube and then decreasing, decreasing, decreasing along the length of the sleeve until I get to the end of the sleeve. So I'm hoping to make a little bit of a wider sleeve. Uh, yeah, and more roomy, more comfortable, more like a jacket as opposed to like a close fitting cardigan. It's more like an outerwear sort of thing. So yeah, this is all coming along, but I was very embarrassed to show you my horrible mistake that I had made because of my own impatience with this whole process. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's been stuck at this point for a couple of weeks just because of the, the surging situation and also because of the sleeve cap situation. But now that I think I've figured this whole thing out, I'm ready to move on. So I am really curious to know if you've ever had a situation where you did something out of just impatience or frustration, you made like the world's biggest mistake with your knitting because you just couldn't ah, deal with it. <laughs> I would love to know. I would love to hear about it. I've heard stories about people just like tossing things into a bag and stuffing it into a corner because it's just like, I can't look at it right now. And that's a little bit how I felt with this, but I want to finish it because I want to wear it. And I think it would be fun. Um, yeah, it's just you guys will all know that it looks terrible on the inside, but it will look great on the outside. So that is basically it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. If you like this episode, please do hit the like button. And if you would like to see more content like this, please do hit subscribe. We come here every Friday and we talk about something to do with knitting or spinning or weaving or dyeing. I love to talk about the fiber arts and things that make us happy. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye for now. Thank you.